Hey, what's going on everybody? Nick here, back with another lockdown fly tying video. I took the weekend off from making videos. My wife home at the house here, we just hung out and we're lazy. Um, in fact, I was so lazy that I didn't really get anything together for today's video. Um, so after uh, rooting around a little bit, I decided that I'm just going to kind of freestyle something today, something that I've been kind of playing with. Um, last week I did a video for a little short uh, quick uh, oh, marabou tail tan estes body and an orange dubbed head um, talked about how I got that pattern from my buddy and it had been very effective well I've been kind of messing around with an articulated version of that just trying to really emphasize the movement that that fly gives um, with the way that fly is tied <clears throat> the marabou and the tail uh, and, or excuse me the marabou and the flash out the back is really the only the only real good movement because the estaz and the in the dubbing doesn't really provide much um, but watching that fly in the water the way that marabou snakes out and the flash trails behind it um, it does feel like it it could be being eaten as a polychaete worm <clears throat> so I'm just going for a similar concept in an articulated style to hopefully just get a little different movement um, I am using some dubbing brushes today to try to again emphasize movement but I'm going for that same sort of tan and orange color combo <clears throat> um, I've tried this a few different ways um, it's gonna be my first go using uh, this dubbing brush like this but uh, we'll just see how it goes here since I didn't have anything else ready and <clears throat> I think it'll be kind of cool so to start out with I'm using an A-Rex SA280 uh, size 4 hook and some Vivas 10 aught orange thread and I'm just gonna lay down a thread base so this is going to be tied on a 60 degree jig shank as I've done a few videos of here recently and uh, I'm hoping that this thing is really going to come alive in the water and really really move I have a feeling that it probably will just based on what I've seen with other flies tied with this stuff so I'm going with some uh, some tan marabou I'm just going to get a nice, well, a nice kind of fluffy, fluffy tail sticking out the back there. This hook here is going to be the, the back portion of the articulated fly, so this is basically going to be the tail. I said I don't really know how this is going to turn out. Hopefully it's not, it's not too terrible since it's a video. But uh, sometimes it's fun to just dink around and try something new. <clears throat> then I'm going to go with a couple pieces of, I believe this is root beer, Crystal Flash. It's kind of a, I don't know how you would describe it, a golden tannish sort of color. And I'm going to come in with these two pieces on the near side, tie them in longer than the marabou, and then I'm going to fold them over. Do the same on the other side. So, so far this first couple steps is pretty much exactly like the other one. Make sure that flash is sticking out a decent ways beyond the, the marabou. I just like that look. And then I'm going to go with some, uh, this is Crustacean Tan Estaz. really like the color on this, I think, more than, than anything else. I like Estaz a lot just because it's so easy to work with, but I try to use a lot of different stuff. And this, this color just seems to work the best for this fly. <clears throat> so we're just going to wrap some. Estes forward, not making it too pretty here because there's really no need. This is going to be attached to a shank, so if there's crowd your eye a little bit or you got wonky fibers sticking out here and there, not a big deal. Okay, so next part's going to be attaching the shank. I want this to ride hook point up. I've got a 20 millimeter 
60 degree jig shank here from Spawn Flyfish with a 5.5 millimeter slotted tungsten bead. This is a mottled orange. Uh, these are from Hairline. I went with the heaviest bead that I had because I really want to want this fly to get down and I really want it to to move up and down. I think that, that heavier heavier tungsten will help that. So I put the the bend of the the shank same side as the hook so it'll ride hook point up and I'm just gonna put this back the shank part in my vise and first part here is I'm gonna put on some non-lead wire maybe six to eight wraps Again, this is just to really help secure that bead while you're working with it so it just stays there. It's really not needed for adding weight, that's for sure. Okay, then I'm going to reattach my tying thread. Then I'm going to proceed to <clears throat> close up this shank with a lot of thread wraps and cover up that lead with thread wraps. Come in behind that lead, make sure it's not going to be able to slide around on me I have no doubt that I could get cutthroat to eat this fly now whether or not it's going to be as productive as that original one that's a whole different story but there's not a chance that if I fish this long enough I won't catch fish on it. These fish of course will eat just about anything when it comes down to it. So I have a couple different ideas at this point. Um, I tied up a dubbing brush or spun up a dubbing brush over the weekend that it's kind of a it's darker than I wanted it to be. It's sort of a dark brownish with some gold flash in it. Um, I was thinking about using that and making it kind of a two-tone, this lighter sand colored and then this darker, but I think, I think I'm going to just try more of this Estes to start out with. I don't think I like that dubbing brush a whole lot. So I'm going to just tie in more of this stuff. Crustacean tan estes. Start wrapping that forward. Basically, I'm going to finish this off with the dubbing brush, um, just like I do with a lot of other patterns. I'm hoping that I'm hoping that I made this dubbing brush so that if I do a few wraps of this right behind the the bead, that the fibers will be kind of long enough when they get wet to slick back over the the junction point and kind of cover everything up. Uh, this is the dubbing brush I'm using. This is just some orange arctic wind dubbing from Fly Tires Dungeon. Some mini bug legs because I just love putting mini bug legs into my brushes and then some orange ripple ice fiber kind of mixed in there as well. We'll see how this looks. Come in right behind the bead with this guy. Start wrapping and kind of try to pull those fibers back as I wrap. So actually, I did two of these brushes yesterday, but the first one ended up way too thick. When I make my dubbing brushes, I really like to make them pretty slender so that I can adjust the the fullness of the fly just by the amount of wraps that I do and with that one it was just gonna be too thick I could tell just looking at it so what I do I think four wraps there use some old scissors to cut that wire 
trust me you don't want to use your good scissors on dubbing brush wire done another turn or two pretty easily but that's all right we'll see how this turns out okay now I'm gonna take my little pick here and just kind of pick this out a little bit make sure there's no all the fibers are free to move and not kind of being trapped down and then I'll also trim up anything that's a little too long for my liking. I can see I've got a few a few legs in there really longer than they need to be. That one and that one. That one's about a mile and a half too long. Basically what I want is when this gets wet to slick back pretty close not completely covered this back end to just sort of I think that'll that will work so it's basically the same same color concept as that fly I did a video of the other day um, pretty much the same in a lot of ways just tied on a shank and um, it's a little bit larger profile. It should move a heck of a lot better. Um, I really like doing this style with the dubbing brush at the collar. Uh, when you strip these kind of flies, and I think that'll be even more emphasized with the, the jig head on it. Um, when it gets wet, that all that stuff of the dubbing brush slicks back and makes a nice kind of profile. But when you strip it and you pause it and it drops, and that, that collar dubbing brush will kind of pulsate out and flutter and those rubber legs twitch around and it's a uh, pretty hard to beat movement wise so my hope is that with as productive as that other fly has been that something like this that moves even more seductively in the water will be even better um, but who knows it was just kind of an idea I've had in my head and like I said since I didn't have something else lined up um, just thought I would go with this sort of freestyle mode and see see how this turned out. Um, I forgot to bring water over here otherwise I would get this wet on video but uh, I'll get it wet and take a picture of it for the the first intro to the video anyway. So you should should get an idea what it looks like so there you have it. Pretty pretty easy. You wouldn't need dubbing brushes for this. You could use all kinds of different stuff at the collar. You could use a hackle feather. You could use something like a reflector flash or one of those sort of deals you could just not tie this one all together it doesn't matter so if you feel like it got the materials try this one out add a few to your box if they work for you I would definitely love to know about it I'm looking forward to, to giving this one a go here hopefully before too much longer so hope everybody's having a good Monday out there and thanks for watching